Um, we have one more um, official talk, which is to be presented um, in absentia. Um, Um, so let me introduce the speaker. Um, Diane Mullen is senior curator at the Wiseman Art Museum at the University of Minnesota and is behind the Prince from Minneapolis exhibition running there right now. Her cur curatorial work focuses on modern and contemporary art. Mullen holds a PhD and MA in art history from the Washington University in St. Louis. Her graduate research considered gender issues in 1970s body art and changing notions of subjectivity in mid-century American art and culture as evidenced in particular by Robert Rauschenberg's earliest work, 1948 to 1953. She has curated numerous exhibitions, including Sad, Illuminating a Northern View of Darkness, Paul Shamroom, Picturing Power, Common Sense, Art in the Quotidian, and Local Time, between 2007 and 2015. Mullen was Assistant Professor of Liberal and Critical Studies and Director of MCAD Gallery at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design from 1995 to 2004. And she's a member of the graduate faculty at the University of Minnesota and adjunct professor in the MCAD MFA program. She regularly publishes in art and scholarly journals and sits on art selection juries nationally. Um, as I said, she's not well and could not be here to present, so I'll read her talk, which is called Prince from Minneapolis, Some Presentation Points on the Exhibition. When approached by the consortium to do an exhibition, uh, the Wiseman Art Museum knew it could not do an exhibition of Prince's affects or tell his life story. Paisley Park and the Minnesota Historical Society were the better producers of such an exhibition. The Wiseman Art Museum as a visual arts museum, however, could tell a story about Prince's relationship to Minneapolis visual culture, particularly in the productive sense. <laughs> <laughs> Prince's emergence in the Twin Cities coincided with a firmly established post-war culture of photography in Minneapolis. Famed photographer and filmmaker Jerome Liebling was hired in the late 1940s to teach photography at UMN as a concerted effort to train returning GIs in practical skills. Born and educated in New York City, Liebling stayed at the university for two decades until moving back east to join the faculty at Hampshire College where he taught Ken Burns. These two decades spawned a culture of photo making, art and journalistic, and collecting the Minneapolis Institute of Art's uh, early and premier collection. Just following uh, the war, Wisconsin-born John Sarkowski studied art history and photography at UW-Madison and then came to Minnesota where he worked as a staff photographer at the Walker Art Center. In 1962, Sarkowski moved on to become a legendary curator of photography at MoMA for three decades. Although in the Twin Cities uh, for a shorter time than Liebling, Sarkowski also left a mark and certainly contributed to a robust scene of photography and photographers here. As such, we focused in the exhibit on the fact that Prince employed local photographers to begin what would become an elaborate and serious construction of his persona. Prince also dipped into the well-established theater scene here too for his costumes, a story that still needs to be told. After speaking with a number of local photographers who shot Prince, four of the most important figures agreed to work with us on the exhibition. It was not lost on us that all the photographers were white. As we know, Minneapolis was far less ethnically diverse in the 1970s and 80s than it is today, with an influx on, uh, of Hmong and then Somali immigrants. In recent decades, things have changed. I believe there's more to be mined uh, about the relationship of Prince to Minnesota's black community, as one must consider how the mores of Somali Muslim culture and Prince's experimentation with sexuality, gender fluidity, and even drugs can connect. Input from the conference's organizer, Arun Saldana, pushed us to expand our project to include the work of other types of artists, resulting in the separate but related gallery presentation entitled Fanning It. In this display, we reviewed many artists, artworks, objects, and other artistic projects that drew on, celebrated, and or referenced prints. We focused on close-to-home projects and examples of those made further out of Minnesota. Less, rigorous, uh, less rigorously organized, uh, Fanning It embraces a variety of acts and products in a kind of serendipitous and party-like way that we felt worked for the subject at hand. more images. And certainly there's more to do. 
It was only recently that new research demonstrated that Frederick Douglass um, was, if not the, then one of the most photographed Americans in the 19th century, right alongside those other photo-loving giants, Abraham Lincoln and Walt Whitman. Even more starting, startling than this revelation was the bringing to light of the fact that Douglas also wrote about photography, making this obvious racial blind spot of history more egregious. The Weizmann Art Museum offers the Prince from Minneapolis exhibition to celebrate one of Minnesota's bright stars. It also proposes a sh to shine a light back on that culture itself as means to ask important questions about blind spots in an effort to create a fuller and more meaningful picture of our local and national history and present. Instead of an exhibition full of answers, Prince from Minneapolis functions interrogatively in hopes of not only opening minds, but also spurring research. Thank you.